What's up guys? Today on Axe Banter, we are out here in the woods at a cabin. Graham, how you feeling? Yeah, it's, you know, it's just a... Ah, let's go! We are gonna talk about a bunch of different axes that we have on the website. Some different variations, some different styles. Yeah. All right guys, first one up, I have got the Holtzbrook Uniker. Guys, this thing is actually really cool. It's a nine inch hatchet. So all your small work that you're doing on a log, maybe you're saying you're putting in notches so you could tie up, tarp. It's a lot of the really small hand use. Now, yeah, even like a setting up a fire stick or something like that. Absolutely. That's gonna be awesome for it. A lot of force behind it without being crazy like a, like a log splitting ax. Yes, you know? absolutely. I see this as like the pocket knife of axes. Plus it's nice to be able to just put the leather case on here, throw it in your backpack or under the seat in your truck. Extremely portable and it's, like we said, the Holtzbrook stuff is just extremely good quality. Yeah, those guys last a long time and they just, they take a beating. All right guys, so that is the Yoniker by Holtzbrook Axe. Um, well, let's run over to here for uh, their offering from CRKT. This is the Kimbery. Now, uh, it's like a set of Lego. You gotta kind of build it together, but um, you know, you would expect this from the Swedes, you know, with Ikea. You gotta build all the stuff that you get, but uh, it's pretty simple. Um, the It's got a square handle here, no sort of shape to it at all. And what's really interesting is that the eye there is square as well. You got a little flare on this side is super subtle. You just throw this bad boy on and boom. You got this, uh, got this ax with a nice deep beard, but there's no contour, there's, there's, there's not a lot to hold on to, um, and no sort of uh, knob on the end for retaining. If I was making an ax handle by hand mm -hmm. and I was having to replace it yeah. constantly, Oh, this sure. This is called, like, I'm talking like hand shaping. A square handle would be so oh, much sure. easier than Oh, sure. I mean, round. you could run, I don't know, because I, I think this is, I think this is hickory as well. Um, but if you could find a uh, hickory at a hardware store, boom, done. <laughs> Just this tiny little thing, throw it in, boom, you're back to work and getting stuff chopped. All right, guys, up next, I have got the Spyderco Spidey Hawk. If I were to imagine a hatchet, axe, anything from Spyderco. This is pretty close to what I'd imagine. This thing right. is is super shiny and just super machined. So you got your Spidey hole here. It's kind of a short bit with kind of a taller toe. Mm -hmm. uh, the beard comes down and then flat cuts to the heel here. Is that is that is the bottom of that sharpened? This is not sharp. Oh, it, no. it looks sharpened because it has the bevel right. coming down. Yeah, it does come down a little bit. Uh, to a point, but mm -hmm. this one's really interesting. It's a polymer handle. Um, you have an actual nut that you drive in to expand it and hold the head on. Um, it has a very interesting pull, or some people call it the butt of the ax. I always call it the butt. This one is very much like hammer-esque, yeah. obviously. Um, I think this is a lot easier to see what you're hammering it when you're using it. I, I see this as like an in the truck camp axe. Yeah, no, I, I can see that, especially if you're with your boys and you're trying to show off a little bit with something right. just a little bit more flashy because not everybody's gonna know what a Holtzbrook or a Hoffman um, is and be impressed by that. But this, doesn't matter who you are, like that thing's gonna kind of right. raise some eyebrows, turn some heads. And it's cool, made in the USA and uh, it's the Hatchet Hawk. Uh, the next axe I have here is actually the most expensive axe sitting on the bench right now. This is the Tor Camp Axe. It's interesting, but it's built from like a blank instead of a lot of these that have a separate head. Right. Um, I don't know if you can say this, but full tang axe? Because um, you got the yeah, steel that comes all the way through, protrudes out the bottom. It's got this these milled scales on either side. That, so, that walnut is gorgeous. It, it is, I mean, it looks good feels good and I wonder what's gonna happen with it uh, over time as you kind of use it and, and right. put some wear into it. Super deep throat, uh, barely any sort of belly to it at all. Got this little nub here, the full tank so it comes out the bottom. So striking with it is gonna be really good. Uh, right. You have a lanyard hole here and uh, it's got a very interesting grind. 
uh, on the bit. It's, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, you can see the milling. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a utility to that, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool little choppy boy. Choppy boy. Yeah. It's actually, I think, a good middle ground from a woodsman's axe or a hatchet to a tactical axe. Yeah, I believe this has a leather sheath. It packs down really thin, and I don't think this is gonna be a heavy duty get work done sort of axe. I think this is a just in case sort of axe. Uh, super cool. Especially for the price. I don't know if I'd throw that into yeah, yeah. a I bunch mean, of hard work. It's weird. Now, uh, American made the guys down at Tour. Uh, I think they put these into military applications. That's one of the core tenants that they try to use. They're you know, uh, veteran owned. Uh, they test all their stuff with people out in the field. So definitely a cool one. Definitely an interesting one. Yeah, I agree. So I have, this is actually an Elijah Woods design. This is the EXT-01 Tomahawk. Definitely a little more of a tactical-esque, um, maybe a combat type of axe. Yeah. So this is an outside the waistband holster. So it goes on the inside of your jeans, your belt goes here through here, passes through there. And then uh, this is more of a quick draw tactical axe. So you pop that bad boy up, mm -hmm. and then if you need it on, on the quick, you know, you have it right here. It's slim, lightweight. You get these G10 scales and the full tang down in through here. I don't know too much about um, like outdoor animal defense, but it wouldn't seem like the worst idea to have that on your hip, ready to go. And the system, once you kind of get it down a little bit better than we did. It, it just rotates. It yeah. does a click. Yeah, let's, let's just pop that in there. There you go. I'll let you do it. Oh, yeah. We did that together. So, <laughs> teamwork makes a dream work. And then it pops like that. So, yeah, it's. I would say it's pretty quick. It actually takes a little bit longer to get in. I think brand new, but popping break, it out. Break it in a little bit. Yeah, but pop and good to go. Yeah, that's the Hogue EX T01 Tomahawk. What I've got over here is another Holtzbrook. Uh, this is the Akka. It's a 26 inch fellings axe. And this is kind of what I think of when I think about axes. Something with a real gentle handle shape, decent length and uh, weight, you know, bigger than what you would call a hand axe. Uh, this is, once again, going back to, their, to their, uh, their quality and the design and the legacy that these guys have, just awesome. Awesome Beautiful little axe. axe. Yeah. I don't know if there's there's much else to say, but this is what I kind of prefer to buy because I'm rarely hiking with an axe. Yeah, you're not cutting down massive trees with that. Nope. But it's good for all around, especially like in this kind of setting. Sure. You're at a cabin. Uh, obviously, you're collecting a lot of wood. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of it's deadfall. Yeah. And so chopping up those thicker branches, something like this. Yeah. Is the, the pound and a half head on here. I think it's just a, a real good all duty. It's cool. Sort of axe. Holtzberg has such a cool heritage that, yeah. I mean, they've been doing it forever. They've got it nailed down. It's pretty solid. All right, guys, up next, we have got the CRKT Jenny Wren. Now, when you pull this one out, you gotta be a little more careful. I don't, Oof. minus the thumb, right? Yeah. Now this one, you wanna be a little extra careful because the pole or the butt of this ax has a sharpened edge here. It's nearly sharp yeah. at the top. I think this is uh, definitely more of a uh, a tactical throw it on your belt or your backpack or throw it into a tree sort of knife. Because right. you have so many so many more edges that can stick into stuff. Maybe a very small Christmas tree. Small Christmas tree. Uh, a particularly difficult can of Vienna sausages. <laughs> Yes, that one. Yeah. Guys, this is just a very unique one. Obviously, it's a tactical design, but with the pole, with the sharpened edge back here, you could use it as like an ice pick, maybe something like that, but just a small little handheld from CRKT. Yeah. Um, well, on my side here, I have the Alder Canoe in 19 inches. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's a traditional axe. There's a couple unique features about it. In the throat, we've got this painted finish on here with a little bit of grippy texture to it. Uh, and the shoulder here is a lot thicker than I've seen on most of the others. Really cool hand forging design. We got some imprinting there. Pretty all around 
sort of axe that you could pretty much take anywhere. A really, a really deep beard on this one too. Yeah. Like it's just, it's, it seems a deeper beard than a lot of these other for the ratio of the, like the cheek profile um, to the bit. Well, and I feel like this and uh, the Holtzbrook that you have over there, it kind of falls in this category of, this is a 20-ish to 26-inch axe. Yeah. They're very similar. You yeah. know what I mean? This one has a painted handle and it's shaped a little different, but they're made, they're made for the same uses. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're, and you're going to see that. You right. see that with pocket knives. You see that with cars. You see that with all these things that there's obviously these designs out there that kind of stand the test of time of being useful. And this is definitely one of them. I like the... Uh, the painted grippy handle yeah it's kind of cool it's pretty cool you can see that there's has uh it's almost like a texture that they mixed in with the paint it's almost like a truck bed texture yeah yeah rhino lining but a lot smaller like, yeah uh smaller nubbins a finer grit finer finer nubbins finer nubbins let's talk about this one we all know what this is Mom. this is a liam hoffman wasatch hatchet now if you haven't seen our video I hope you go and see that one next. We went and did a shop tour with Liam and he told us his process and showed us pretty much start to finish of how they make an ax. But there's so much work that goes into these things. Uh, this is like the perfect hatchet to explain the anatomy. Uh, you oh, yeah. got the pole or the butt, you got the shoulder, the handle, you got the cheek, the toe, the bit, the heel, the beard, the belly, the throat, and the knob. But this one, it's so pronounced. You can you can point out every single one of those. Oh. You know what I mean? The eye. Oh, and the eye. Yeah. Yep. Is this weird? But. No, it's not weird. I just love the smell of their handles. And when you not throw their weird. leather, uh, the leather sheath on here as well. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, last axe that I think we have here. Uh, Fisker makes, they actually make a ton of outdoor cutting things, but they also make axes. Now this is a particularly interesting one as well because we have a hybrid uh, synthetic polymer and natural hickory. It seems like all these are hickory. Yep. Uh, just really resilient wood. But we got a combination here of uh, traditional hickory and then a, uh, a synthetic handle. What's really common on a lot of synthetic handles is that they go around the head right. of the ax instead of through it like you would normally. And actually we saw uh, this synthetic one over here actually right. go through it, which is um, apparently uh, not common. We got the same sort of thing, a little less pronounced in the belly, more pronounced in the throat, thanks to a little bit bigger knob here on the bottom. Uh, but what really sets this axe apart is the blade shape, the profile, the vertical profile, top-down profile, one yeah. of the profiles, and you have a lot better splitting action. Uh, these are flared out a little more aggressively than we see on a lot of these other, and it really lends itself to slamming into a, into a log, splitting it and spreading those, yeah. those two halves apart pop, pop a lot more aggr aggressively. Yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. This one's made in Finland. It tells you right here to wear safety glasses. Yep, which was what we were definitely doing earlier when we did uh, were filming before for the intro. Everyone had safety glasses on all the time. Yeah, that's very aggressive wedge shape. Sure. Well, I have one more axe, and it's my personal axe. It's Your right EDC here. axe? Yes. This is my Liam Hoffman keychain bottle opener. I love it. Yeah. Got my Viking head bead on there. It's pretty cool. The little mouth goes. I'm but sure that's what he sounds like. This is my most used axe that I have. Yep. Popping all those popping Mexican cokes. Yes. Yeah. And root beers. I thought about sharpening this and trying to like make a small feather stick. Sure. But then I was like, nah. Then you can never not. carry it in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So that's what we have. I want to go throw some more axes. So let's wrap up this video. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, that's what we have for you today on Axe Banter. We appreciate you guys joining us out here in the cabin in the woods, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching Knife Banter with us. Interested in more? Maybe check out the other videos. Don't forget to leave a like, maybe subscribe, and 
can buy a knife or two from our website. See you around.